This excerpt was taken from a full of bloom interview with Mark Farner. If you'd like to be notified as more from this interview is uploaded, hit the subscribe button and click the bell. To listen to more from this interview, click the link in the description. Are you having, from years of playing guitar, any arthritis, anything like that? Uh, thank God, no. And and maybe, just maybe, I'm thinking uh, that the Wobenzyme that I started on in 19... or. 2002 uh that the wobenzyme adam is what's uh keeping it off because i i really don't i i'm still playing and i see guys that uh that are not my age that are 10 years younger than me that can't play anymore because of the arthritis and so i thank god for uh the anti-inflammatory uh diet and the information that we got about inflammation and how to control it in our bodies because that's really the key to a good life to good health um and as far as your voice are you actually beyond just the singing do you have any like exercises you do no no i uh i don't warm up i mean i haven't everybody said well what do you want how do you warm your vocal up i say the first song did you ever smoke cigarettes or anything i did smoke cigarettes from the time i was 11 till i was 22 and then I had a bleeding ulcer and uh, the doctor told me I was killing myself. And I said, well, uh, I don't swallow the smoke. He says, do you swallow your spit? <laughs> and I went, oh, yeah, OK, I get it. And so I quit smoking when I was 22. Oh, OK. And as far as um, were you into drugs back in the day? Only into marijuana. I was scared to death uh, because I hadn't experienced uh, we played Staten Island, we had, there was a music festival, Staten Island, New York, and uh, Hendrix was on the bill. It was a, there was a bunch of people on that bill. But Grand Funk had already gone on, so Jimmy sent his right-hand man, Rabbit, over and told him uh, to come and get me. So I'm in my dressing room, Rabbit comes, and he says, hey, Mark, man, he said, Jimmy wants to see you. Uh, I said, okay, man, I'll get some dry clothes on, I'll be right over. So I go over to Jimmy's dressing room and uh he says brother mark how you doing we give each other a hug and then i look over and dude on the on the table they got these look like snow drifts of lines up there you know and i'm going oh my god i looked at that and uh and rabbit has got a hundred dollar bill rolled up and he's handing it to me and i'm going guys i don't do this i've, I've never done this before so hey go ahead knock yourself out i'll watch you guys and and Jimmy looks over at me and he says, Brother Mark, you know I wouldn't give you nothing that would hurt you. And I went thinking, damn, here's my guitar hero. He's telling me it ain't going to. I said, would well, just give me just a little tiny bit uh, I, to see what it tastes like. He says, uh, well, Rabbit puts his switchblade you know, and he sticks that, that knife down at just the tip, you know, into that line of cocaine, whatever that was. And put it up to my nose. He said, block your other nasal. So I held my finger over one and, he, and wham, I took that. And it felt like it went straight through the top of my head, dude. It went <laughs> up my nose and out the top of my head. And, and those guys had to go on stage. And there I was. I, I went back over to the equipment truck. I had a packing blanket up on the cab and I was going to get up on that packing blanket and watch my guitar hero do his thing because the, the cab was right even with the stage height and I could see everything perfectly. So I get up on top of that. Jimmy comes out to play guitar and he's reaching for his guitar neck and he made six passes at his guitar and he's missing it by a foot. I am not kidding you. This kid gets up on the stage, blonde hair, long hair, no shirt, no shoes and socks, uh, bell bottoms that he walked the excess length off of. And he goes up behind Jimmy, grabs Jimmy's arm and his guitar and puts them together. And Jimmy kind of looks over his shoulder at him like, wow, thanks, man. And Jimmy tried to play, but Jimmy was having a real hard time. And... And this stuff, what, whatever it was, they, I, I found out later that it was a cross between cocaine and heroin. I'm up there on this truck, and Jimmy was having a hard time. He couldn't play a chord. He couldn't play. He was trying to play notes, and they were just 
man, it was screwed up. And he hit his echo plex or his echo unit, and this thing went wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and my brain was doing that with that. And I fell off the damn truck, brother. I, <laughs> I came to, and there's all these faces are looking down at me. Mark, are you all right? <laughs> I'm going, oh, my God, get me out of here. I am sick. I threw up. Oh, my God. I was. And that, you know, experience like that, I would never go back to do anything like that again. My God, why would you? Holy shit. Yeah. And really, I tell I'll tell young people that I'll be like, I mean, you can't ever expect a kid to not try anything. I always say, even if you do smoke weed, just Try to wait till your brain's through growing, you know, when you're like 21 or whatever. But yeah. uh, if you can't, just stick with booze and weed. Never try to make things more. It's like, and I always say, I mean, has there ever been a success story for cocaine use? You know what I mean? <laughs> Have we heard one yet where it was like, you know what? I did a shitload of cocaine and uh, I just got all this stuff. I started a business, totally successful. It always is like their entire life falls apart. Absolutely. And every time that I knew people that, that were just getting into that and then I would tell them, oh, man, don't get into that shit that everybody that brings people down, man. You might get high on it, but it's going to bring you down and. Every time I told somebody that, sorry to say, it brought them down. I mean, seriously. Did you stop smoking weed at some point? I did when I married uh, my wife, Lisa. Okay, which you've been married for like 45 years or something like that? Yeah, we're married 43 years. Congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. You haven't been... smoked since then? Oh, no, I, I, I've smoked since then, but I didn't smoke for, oh, 10 years. Yeah, I use it not not so much recreationally anymore as to control pain. So it's part of your routine nowadays. When I when I have to use it, yeah, yeah. But I could, and here in Michigan, it's legal, you know. So I can sure. go down. To Same here. And I can get an edible thing. I don't like the uh, indica. I like the sativa. I I like uh, I like it because it's more in your body and it lasts longer. It's not so much a head thing. It's, it's you know, you, it just makes your body real nice. In regards to writing music, did you enjoy smoking and writing songs back in the day? Yes, and something that back when we were younger, the, the weed was a whole lot different. I mean, we were getting uh, Columbia, you know, red bud <laughs> or... Uh, getting that gold from the Yucatan Peninsula. It was always just the weed without any of this extra, whatever they do to it to, to make it kick your ass uh, chemically. I like to, to stay with uh, a, a natural as much as possible. Right. Yeah, it's so powerful nowadays. Nowadays, I'll even joke. I'll be like, holy shit, I see dead people. I mean, it's like just too <laughs> much. <laughs> yeah, dude. I hear it all of that. Yeah. I, uh, I I don't imagine I would write a very good song in that condition. Tom. 